What is going on everybody? Welcome to a data analysis with Python in the Pandas module tutorial series. In this series we're going to be trying to cover pretty much everything you might need to use with the Pandas module along with Python for all kinds of different types of data analysis. So first of all, Python is the programming language. If you don't have Python already, what you'll want to do is head to python.org and go to downloads and download the latest version basically this is for windows because i'm on windows and they know that and so just download the latest version don't go with 2.7 or any version of 2 but if say there's 3.6 or whatever or even python 4 or something you should be able to just download that now moving this aside once you have python the way that we are going to develop is i develop in the basic ide but you can develop in any IDE that you want. So if you're following along and you use Anaconda with the Spider IDE, or maybe you're using IPython Notebooks or PyCharm, whatever, it doesn't matter. Follow along with whatever you want. If you're in an interactive development environment, just you probably don't have to do print uh, when we say you know the data frame head or something like that. If that doesn't mean much to you. Don't worry about it. Next, we're going to need Pandas. This is the Pandas website. You could download it from here and install it from here, but we're not going to do that. We're going to use pip. And then finally, this is my website, pythonprogramming.net. All the tutorials, including this one, are posted up here in text form. Sample code is there. Everything you can need, it, you'll be able to find it here. Also, if we cover a topic that you don't really know about, say we cover Python dictionaries, you can always go to search and start typing in diction. There we go. And there's some dictionaries for you, so you could view the basics tutorial on Python dictionaries. Now, that's that. Moving this aside, um, what we're going to do, once you have Python installed, the next thing you want to do is install Pandas. Now, Pandas has a bunch of requirements and stuff like this and dependencies, but we can get Pandas really quickly by doing a simple pip install Pandas. Now, if you run pip install Pandas and that doesn't work for you, it says maybe pip is not a recognized command, then what you want to do is give the full path to pip. The way that you would do that is c colon slash and then Python, your version number, I'm 3.4, so I would say 34. And then it's in scripts and pip. And then we would do install pandas. Now that should install pandas along with numpy and matplotlib. If it doesn't, or at least to check, just hit the up arrow or whatever. Now instead of pandas, numpy. And then again, instead of numpy this time, matplotlib. Now, as we go along, especially at the very end, we'll talk about maybe sklearn, something like that, uh, and we'll need to install that as well. But nowadays, you know, there's a million ways you can install packages <laughs> with Python. Nowadays, pip has got to be the easiest way to do it. Um, so that's what we're going to use. If you don't, uh, if that doesn't work for you, I'll put a link in the description for my pip install tutorial. Uh, you can always get pandas another way, but uh, I'm not going to waste time on here. Everybody, most people should be fine with pip install pandas. Now, um, once you have that, we go open up here, and then you're ready to put in your data. Now, the question that you might have is, what is pandas? Why would we use this pandas module as opposed to just writing Python code? Because you could take um, so, so like pandas, it generally works with data frames. You can work with series too. A series is like a list with a column header and an index. Uh, but you could take uh, like a data frame is generally it's a lot like a spreadsheet, right? If you print out that data frame to the console, you'll see that it looks identical to a spreadsheet with column headers. It's got maybe an index with maybe you've got dates there or a line number or something like that. And then in between, you've got all your data. OK, and so it's a lot like maybe an Excel spreadsheet if you're familiar. Now, why would we use Python over Excel? Well, the reason why we use Python over Excel is Excel despite the name, is not very fast at all, and it doesn't speed up for you. In fact, as you get bigger, it's going to slow down and not be the greatest. Now, uh, with Python, things are going to be much faster. So I see a lot of people with Excel starting to do machine learning with like maybe k-means or something like this, uh, or k-nearest neighbors or whatever, and uh, it's very slow. I mean, the whole process, even on a very relatively small data set, might take you three minutes or something like that or even on a, on a you know medium sized data set most people would call it large but on really a medium size let's say you're dealing with a couple gigabytes of data uh, well first of all if you're doing, dealing with more than like two gigabytes Excel is going to probably stop responding but also <laughs> it's going to be really slow it's going to take you like 30 minutes to run even even let's say you're not even doing machine learning you're just trying to do some basic calculations you're probably going to have a problem now you can tie in 
Python to Excel and stuff like that. And you, there's other things, other languages that will tie in and help you speed it up. But eventually running headless with something like Python or even C or whatever is in your favor. So then why use Python over, let's say, C++? Python is very friendly. It's uh, a lot of people kind of uh, nag on Python saying it's slow, uh, especially slow compared to, say, C++. Uh, that's simply uh, technically true, but in practice, absolutely false. <laughs> okay, uh, Python is almost as fast. I mean, we're talking 99.9% as .9 fast as C because Python is written with C. Okay, and a lot of these packages like pandas and pandas utilizes NumPy, that's a C library. It's just a Python wrapper around C. Okay, so because of that, it's going to calculate as fast as C because it is C. Okay, so so pandas with Python and Python with NumPy and a lot of these other packages that people use for data analysis, it's just as fast. And you get the loveliness that Python brings to the table, which is you know really nice. It's obviously it's static types, but so you've got you know the syntax is just easy even for a newcomer to understand it. Usually you can read it and it makes sense. So then finally, why would we use pandas rather than Python plus say NumPy? Well the reason why you would use pandas is pandas is extremely efficient. It's basically built to make your life easier. Um, so let me go ahead and just show you a quick example. I'm just going to copy and paste this code. Everything that you're going to see here we'll cover in the series. I'm just going to copy and paste the code. If you want to copy and paste the code, head to pythonprogramming.net, the data analysis or dashboard, then the data analysis tab. You can copy and paste the code as well if you want to, but really don't worry about it as long as you're thinking you're going to go to the next video because we're going to cover the code anyway. I'm going to copy, paste. Here's some code. We're importing pandas as PD here. It's just standard to import it as PD. It's just a shorthand way. Um, matplotlib for data visualization. If you want to know more about matplotlib and data visualization, I actually have a pretty large uh, tutorial series for matplotlib found here. I'll put a link to that in the description, and it, as we cover matplotlib, we'll probably mention that again. But we're not really going to focus too heavily on data visualization. This is data analysis and manipulation. Now, data visualization is a form of data analysis, sure. Uh, but I already have a very extensive series on doing that with matplotlib, so we're not going to touch on that much. So style is just with matplotlib. Then we've got a start and end date, and we're using the I.O. of pandas. This is another reason why you would use pandas. Pandas is, it works with all kinds of uh, data types, and it can work, it can interact between data types too. So you can import from CSV output to SQL, or import from SQL output to HTML, import from HTML output to CSV, and so on. You can kind of go between those different data types, and the, the most beautiful thing is, no matter what the data type you import from uh, is, handling the data frame is identical, no matter what. So it's our way of kind of normalizing all data sets, um, or data types rather. Anyway, uh, so start and then we use this IO data. It's just a way of working with uh, a web API, basically. So we're referencing the Yahoo Finance API. Those of you who are familiar with my tutorials, uh, we usually end up doing something with stock prices. Uh, I'm not going to do stock prices. Still doing prices, though, or at least markets. We're going to do the uh, housing market with real estate. We'll just do some data analysis on real estate information. Uh, this is how we can visualize the data frame. We'll talk more about that in the next tutorial. We can plot various columns, like adjusted close as a column, and we can show it. So we'll go ahead, save and run that. It's F5 for anyone who's not familiar. Runs that. Here's the actual pricing data, dates at the bottom, and then here is just the head of the data. This is The head is basically the top five rows. So there's obviously a lot more data points here. It's just these are the first five. So then you've got date, open, high, low, close. Date is lower than all these other columns because date is being treated as an index, which we'll talk about in the next tutorial. Um, but that's basically it. So as you can kind of see now, especially visually, Pandas is going to put things into what you would probably call a spreadsheet-like uh, format. Uh, same thing with like a, maybe a table in a database. Same same sort of thing. I mean, this is kind of this is how people are accustomed to handling data. So it's it works with you that way, and you shouldn't be too uncomfortable working with a data frame. It should be relatively uh, normal feeling to you. Uh, but as we go on, being able to apply various uh, calculations, uh, analysis, statistical kind of stuff on even massive data sets is very fast. 
uh, and very efficient. So it's definitely very useful. And there's a lot of pre-built uh, commands in there for you, uh, so you don't even have to really worry about writing them. And Pandas, at the end of the day, is highly customizable. There's ways you can map functions either to the entire data frame, make a new column based on a new function, or even make rolling applies and stuff like that. So anyways, a lot of stuff for us to cover. If you have questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them in the uh, comments below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.